Don't say I didn't warn you. That ending has lost none of its power in the 70 years since it was filmed. Brilliantly directed by Cy Enfield, shot by cinematographer Guy Rowe, and edited by George Amy. And the performances of Frank Lovejoy and Lloyd Bridges could not be any better. They put everything they had into this one. As I mentioned at the top, writer Joe Pagano based the story on an actual crime, one of the most notorious incidents in California history. In 1933, a pair of amateur crooks, Harold Thurman and Jack Holmes, kidnapped Brooke Hart, the handsome and popular scion of a San Jose mercantile family. They demanded a $40,000 ransom for his return, although Hart had already been killed, drowned in the bay near San Mateo. When they were captured, Thurman and Barnes told conflicting stories, both blaming the other for hatching the plan and causing Hart's death. And this led the press to speculate that the conflicting testimonies might lead to a mistrial, or worse, an acquittal for one of the men. So riled up by all the groundless media speculation, a mob of more than 4,000 angry citizens descended on the San Jose jail. The sheriff begged Governor James Rolfe to send in the National Guard to keep the peace, but Rolfe refused. The mob overwhelmed the police, pulled Thurman and Holmes from their cells, and hanged them in the town square. The next day, the governor praised the vigilantes for taking matters into their own hands. This was the last public lynching in California. Ironically, Nazi propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels used newsreels and photos of the incident as proof of Americans' inherently barbaric nature. The incident inspired at least two other movies, Fritz Lang's first American film, Fury, made in 1936, and the 2006 independent film, Valley of the Heart's Delight, which diffused the drama by focusing on a gallant reporter covering the story rather than the perpetrators of the crime. Now, Cy Enfield, who worked on the screenplay of Try and Get Me with Joe Pagano, stuck with the book's subplot about a cavalier columnist, well played by Richard Carlson, learning a lesson about civic responsibility. But Enfield felt this was really Howard Tyler's story, and his rendering of one flawed man's spiral into hell makes Try and Get Me, arguably, the bleakest noir ever. It would also be the next-to-last film Cy Enfield made in America. He directed 1952's Tarzan's Savage Fury, but his two previous features were deemed un-American, and he shortly joined such directors as Jules Dassin, John Barry, and Joseph Losey, who'd relocated to Europe to maintain their careers. Interesting to note that the final Hollywood film made by each of those directors was a film noir. In England, Enfield returned to B pictures using aliases such as Charles de la Tour so the films could be played without protest in the United States. One of these, The Limping Man from 1953, starred Lloyd Bridges, who was gray listed as a suspected communist until he cleared himself by giving names to HUAC. Enfield continued to write and direct under pseudonyms, but by the time he made the fantastic Hell Drivers in 1957, he was attaching his actual name to the films. As with Joseph Losey, people thought by then Cyril Enfield was British, even though he was born in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Ironic then that his most famous film, 1964's Zulu, is one of the most iconic British movies of all time. Enfield was a remarkable jack-of-all-trades. In addition to making movies, writing books, and being an accomplished magician, he was a world-class silversmith, handcrafting a cleverly designed silver chess set to commemorate the famed 1972 World Championship match between Boris Spassky and Bobby Fischer. In 1978, with his business partner, Chris Rainey, he invented one of the world's first micro word processors called a micro writer. It was later refined as a device called a Psyche, named in Enfield's honor after his death in 1995. Now, as for Hazel Weatherwax, this is one of the most peculiar performances of its time. And I give huge credit to Enfield and actress Catherine Locke because this character barely registers in the book. Her scenes with Frank Lovejoy are painful and heartbreaking. 
I wouldn't go out with a married man, you know. I'm not either. Married, I mean. Locke makes this sad, lovelorn woman unforgettable. She only made a handful of pictures, including The Snake Pit and The Seventh Cross. Primarily a stage actress, she worked with John Garfield and Lee J. Cobb on Broadway before they migrated to Hollywood. Locke was married to legendary writer-producer Norman Corwin, arguably the most esteemed figure in the history of American radio. And then there's Dr. Vito Simone. Now, if the voice of actor Renzo Chisana sounds familiar to you, maybe you're old enough to remember a bizarre cult figure of the 1950s, the Continental, a smooth-talking Casanova who pitched woo to lonely women on a series of records, audio seductions with titles like This is my beloved, take me back, and walk the lonesome night. Yep, Dr. Simone was the Continental. And although Renzo Chisana died in 1970, the Continental lived on. Christopher Walken revived the shtick in a series of memorable comedy sketches on Saturday Night Live. Well, I hope that lighter note serves as a tonic for the heaviness of today's movie. Join me back here in March. I'm clearing out to make way for 31 days of Oscar. Let us know what you think of that development on the Noir Alley Facebook page and Twitter feed. And if you can't wait five weeks for more Noir, join me in Seattle, February 14th to the 20th, for a special international edition of my annual Noir City Film Festival. Hope to see many of you there. Until March, stay in the shadows. <laughs>